Hey guys, it's Todd from Like-Minded Lunatics bringing you another drink place where it's all we do around here. It's all Baron Zemo reprogrammed us to do <laughs> around here. Welcome back to Drink Place Where and welcome back to Like-Minded Lunatics. While I'm thinking about it, hit that subscribe button right there in the bottom right hand corner. Bang! Hit it! Bang! Uh, we'll be seeing how much bigger this family is getting all the time. We appreciate it when you do that. But also, then you'll be getting uh, notifications if you want about when we put out new stuff. And we have a ton of new stuff on the channel. That's right. Like My Lunatics isn't just Drink Place Swear. It's also my buddy and writing partner, Mark Gifford's Friday Night Videos. The Friday Night Videos are excellent. Hey, and now that people are starting to get the vaccine for COVID, he's starting to do some uh, with guests. Uh, so he had his buddy Juan uh, come over and uh, they did talked about Judas Priest breaking the law video. You got to watch it. Mark has some pretty cool gloves. I don't have anything that cool. Um, anyway, go check that one out. Uh, check out plenty of stuff on the channel. We also have Like My Lunatics Try, where we've been uh, grading uh, TV dinners. Uh, check that out as well. It's a good time. All of it's a good time. And if you feel like you're at home when you watch these videos and you're part of the family, hit that subscribe button for more information uh, from us soon. All kinds of new stuff in the making. Okay. Uh, what is Drink Place Swear? Well, it sounds like, well, what it is, it's... Uh, it's me <laughs> uh, playing a game, usually a classic one. Today it is a classic one. Pair it with a beverage and I tell you a story. So what do we got today? Let's get this set up here. Uh, if you're not familiar with this game, you're, you're wondering what this is. It's Castlevania 3, Dracula's Curse. Another great Konami game and another great Castlevania game. I played the original Castlevania for you a long time ago on the channel. That's a good one. You should go check that out. And then I even played uh, the Sega Genesis version, uh, uh, Castlevania Bloodlines. Great game. Great game. Let's go LML. Like-minded lunatics. I said that kind of country. Like-minded lunatics. And... Um, this is going to be an LML day. We're talking like-minded lunatics origins today. Origins. Well, the uh, origin of this beverage is that it is an American original. This is a Jim Beam and Coke I'm pairing with my Castlevania 3 today. Uh, get yourself something. All right. Um, Castlevania 3 was a return... Uh, to, to the style of Castlevania 1. I don't know if you ever had the Castlevania games as a kid, but Castlevania 1, well-loved by everyone, by monster movie lovers, by video game lovers. Great game, great soundtrack. Uh, the whole thing is good. And very challenging, very difficult. And then um, Castlevania 2 comes out, Simon's Quest. I remember I rented that ga the game. Uh, and, uh, you know, when you rent a game... At Blockbuster Video or whatever, you didn't get a manual for it. You didn't get an instruction manual, and the 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 word well, there was no internet yet, so you, you just had to ask friends. So I spent the weekend trying to play Simon's Quest. First of all, it's not like this. You're walking around a town, uh, asking people questions, and there's sort of like a puzzle puzzler component to it, where you have to try to figure out where to go, what to do, but it's all very cryptic. A uh, lot of uh, red herrings, uh, people in the town telling you things that, that don't matter, that don't make any sense, but, you know, you might think are important. Um, I couldn't figure the game out, didn't like it, and I guess that, that's how a lot of people felt. Although the, yeah, there are some Simon's Quest lovers out there, masters of the game. Good for you. I'm not playing Simon's Quest on the channel because I don't want to sit online for 45 minutes to figure out how to beat level one. So, skipped to Castlevania 3, and you can tell that they were like, oh, sorry, we'll go back to what we do well. Because <laughs> Castlevania 3, back to the Castlevania, whoops, back to the Castlevania 1 style, and again, great soundtrack, and a great look. I mean, they could put out a game like this today, a new Castlevania. By the way, where the, where's Castlevania? They could put out one like this in the 8-bit form. I, I mean, there's, there's a massive audience for it. We're, we're all... Always wanting more Castlevania stuff. All right, let's get to the story today. Like I said, it's going to be like-minded lunatics origins. I wanted to talk a little bit about how all of this got started. Um, you know, way before uh, there was a YouTube channel, it was two dudes uh, writing radio dramas together. 
Um, but before that, we didn't know each other. We worked uh, together for a couple of years and never even really knew each other. Mark and I, that is. So I thought I would I would kind of look back and tell that story uh, today. It, this was like, um, oh, like 2012 or 2013. Uh Mark and I work at a, a state university here, here in Texas, and we had offices right next door to each other, working in the same department, and didn't know each other. Well, call it fate, call it luck. That's my best, Bill Murray. Um, we we happened to talk one day, so um, my boss uh, told the department that they needed to write a hundred word bios and send it to Mark because Mark ran the website um, for our department. Uh, the university's website, but our our site. Get a, get your bio to this guy, Mark Gifford. So I sent it to him, and I had my uh, website address in the bio saying I was a fiction writer. That website's still up if you're looking for an archive of my old uh, published fiction, ToddWritesStories.com. Click the link in the description. Click the link. Some fun old stuff in there. Um... And uh, Mark saw that, and uh, then he saw me in the hall sometime later, and he said, Hey, man, I saw you write fiction. And I said, Yeah. And he says, Oh, cool, I write a little bit. Um, check out my uh, check out my website. And he shared with me his website at the time, hyperliterature.com. Ch check out the link in the description. Uh, hyperliterature.com for all his stuff. And he said he had a podcast that he had started where he was kind of doing, like, audiobooks or radio dramas. Well, I kind of perked up when I heard that because growing up, I used to love the old uh, radio dramas. My dad, I don't know if it was insomnia or what, but he didn't sleep much at night. He always forced himself to go to bed at a good time, and even if he couldn't sleep, to, to lay there. So the result was he would sit there and listen to talk radio all night over on the AM dial. And uh, when it wasn't, uh, oh, I don't know, some opinionated uh, dude talking about politics... Uh, it was radio dramas, and uh, man, they, they they were great. And so I would I would hear them from. Look at that! You see that guy take me out? Well, I've been trudging through zombies and all this stuff. He just rises out of the earth and takes care of me, no problem. Uh, we can't let this happen. We're gonna have to take care of this guy. So um, he says he's, he he did some stuff, and I should go check it out. Well, radio dramas, I, I'm perked up. I'm excited. I'm liking that idea. So on the way home that day from work, I have about a 30 minute commute from the office to my house. So stuff to do, or nothing to do. That is fine. You got to find stuff to do. So I, I thought I would check it out, and I listened to this story, to Mark's story. All right, let's take this dude out, and then I'll continue because he made a fool of me, didn't he? He made a mockery of me, is what he did. Should I use the dagger, you think? Oh, the dagger is excellent for this guy. Ah, there you go. You're nothing. You're nothing to me. Didn't I say that about Donkey Kong a long time ago? Remember Donkey Kong? That was a good one. <laughs> that was a good one. So, um, I listened to Mark's story, I Biscuit. It was great. Uh, loved it. And it was in that sort of radio drama style. And look at this uh, about Castlevania 3. You're picking your path. Uh, for, for 1990, that's a lot of choice, you know? You don't, you don't see that all, all the time in these old games. Okay, let me pause. Give you some attention. Beverage some attention. We already killed a disgusting skeleton. I'm um, feeling pretty good about that. So I listened to it. I Biscuit, right? I could tell that Mark was a science fiction fan. I could tell that he had a sense of humor. He liked the dystopian stuff, but it, it, sort of a dark sense of humor. The story was great. I really enjoyed it. About this little robot uh, in the future, uh, whose job it is uh, at you know at this food processing plant to make biscuits, and they are programmed to make the best biscuits. And so all these little robots make the biscuits, but then this one little robot. Um, refuses well he comes up with his own recipe so somehow he's gained autonomy and he's doing whatever he wants he's making a, a, a different biscuit but not only is it different it's better which i think is insulting to the humans that programmed him and so uh, because he's uh, you know he's sort of like um 
you know, not going to listen to them. And, you know, you can tell this is sort of fashioned after iRobot, but a funny little culinary twist on it. And then in the end, they have to dismantle, spoiler alert, they have to dismantle the robot. Love the story, love the performance of the story, and the fact that I was in this in this drama. And I was like, dude, this is great. So the next morning, I saw him at work. And I told him as such. And uh, he said, okay, well, cool, man. Well, maybe we should write something together. Now, at this time, uh, I was starting to get a little disillusioned with the idea of publication and with the idea of, oh, see those? Mm, you saw those in Castlevania 1. One hit and they take you out. Got to be careful here. A little disillusioned with the, with the thing. I was, I mean, it doesn't even do you any good to be mad at it because it's, it's an inanimate object in a video game. And yet... My rage is so justified. Did I hit it? I don't know what happened there. Maybe I just hit the candle. Oh. We're going to come back. <laughs> We're going to come back and and beat that in a minute. So he said, let's write something together. Well, I was getting disillusioned with the writing thing because I had gone through school, a bachelor's degree in English, an MA in English, an MFA in creative writing, came out of school, and I had like a, a couple of little publications. But I couldn't find an agent. I was submitting to all these magazines. You're waiting six months, eight months to hear back, and it's no. And uh, submitting to these contests that cost money. Not, not so much as a personalized email, just a, some form email or some form letter that comes. I, I was starting to get frustrated with it, and, and uh, it was taking the joy out of out of this whole thing. And what did I go into it for? Because I loved it. So this was a chance to like do something enjoyable again. But when you're not used to writing with someone, you're used to just doing it on your own, you never know how it's going to work out if you're going to gel, you know. So he says, uh, well, you got any ideas that you're kicking around? And I said, well, I got this little idea for a story about a college instructor who doesn't make enough money. And we both kind of laughed. And I said, and uh, he picks up, he takes up, gra he takes up grave robbing. No, <laughs> Gonna go through the roof about this part. And uh, look at this. I mean, utterly pathetic. I could have practiced beforehand. I could have I could have said, you know, maybe I'll play this game a little bit uh, so that I, I know some of the pitfalls for, <laughs> for the video. I haven't played this game in two or three years. Because mm. I didn't even remember that guy takes multiple hits. That's a waste of my time. I'm moving on. Uh, so I had this idea for this grave robber story. And he said, well, send me a few pages. This was the first time I, ever I was going to work on Google Docs. Uh, so I like had to get a Google <laughs> Drive account and, and all of that. Am I even going the right way? Why am I going right to left here? This feels strange. All right. It looks okay. And uh, I wrote a couple of pages and shared it with him. Uh, just getting this story started, grave robber. Hey, by the way, we would eventually write and produce uh, the audiobook or radio drama when Thomas tried to be a grave robber. If you have not heard our stuff yet and you're just watching the Friday night videos and this video game nonsense, please go check out uh, when Thomas tried to be a grave robber. It's a good time and it's the first part of a four part series. Uh, it's a real good time. Look at these owls. I feel like the uh, the art on these owls is pretty exceptional. So, um, I start writing this thing, I write a couple of pages, and I share it with him. Well, a couple days later, I get up, uh, and I, I get to the computer, and I want to see, like, go back and look at it and see if I want to add anything or whatever. Well, I get there, and, uh, I can see a little red cursor, and right at the moment that I was there, Mark was there adding stuff. I felt like, oh boy, you know, you, like, walk in on your, <laughs> on your parents when you're a little kid, walk in their bedroom at the wrong time. I felt like, whoa, and I... <laughs> <laughs> Clo closed the laptop and ran off. I think I even physically got up and ran away. I don't know why. I just felt nervous about looking over his digital shoulder. Um, so I, and then I waited another day before I even went back. Uh, I was a little nervous. I was a little nervous because I didn't know what to expect. Because what if this guy's no good? Or what if he writes in a weird way? Or what if he has ideas that I don't like? And I can be kind of like, uh, I don't know, abrasive at times. 
But I log on, I log on to the World Wide Web uh, via Google Drive, and I read what he has added. And he's added uh, about as much as I had already written. He has added another 100%. And uh, it's good. <sighs> what a relief. And in fact, it's real good. He wrote this really great scene. And it was the, one, the first one I was really impressed with um, of the stuff we did together. I already told you I liked Ibiscuit. But... Um, he wrote this really great scene uh, where Thomas is getting is digging and he gets into a grave and he's trying to get the lid off and uh, of this of this uh, grave and he get or excuse me this coffin he gets the lid off and he sees an amulet and uh, Mark Mark's a big fan of writing a talisman into a story and uh, the sort of Lovecraftian kind of stuff uh, you know a thing that has meaning but you don't know what it is and it might be horrific meaning and. Uh, I, I was swept away. I was like, wow, what does the amulet do? You know, this is something I hadn't planned for. And that was the first moment where I realized that, like, I'm happy with my stuff that I write on my own it, just fine. But when Mark and I write together, it's just it just is better. My stuff is better when he's involved. That is, I, I don't know if he feels exactly the same way. I hope so. Um, but Thomas was great. We got together. We rented out a conference room. Now, I should be more cautious here. Rented out a conference room uh, at work during our office hours and um, and recorded it. And, uh, you know, I was like, great. So what are you going to do? He said, well, I'm going to edit it and, uh, you know, get the right performance of your voice and things. And I was going to find some sound effects online. And uh, I'm going to do this all day. I'm going to be dying on this part all day. Uh, get some sound effects online. And that's when I sort of had the idea, you know, when I was in college making movies, uh, remember when I told you about me making movies in college? You can go watch that one. That was fun. TLU Film Fest. Shout out to the Bulldogs yet again. Um, I asked my cousin Ricky, who's a professor of music at Texas State, uh, if he would help me out. Um, I was a college kid, and he was a professional already by then. And, uh, and he did. He always did. And he produced such great stuff, elevated the work. So I asked him if he would uh, take part in our stuff. Uh, he accepted and has since uh, become one of the Like My Lunatics, one of the original Like My Lunatics, putting together these programs. And he did something really amazing with the soundtrack and the sound effects for Thomas. And so we would go on to finish a trilogy, the three of us finish a trilogy together, and then eventually write uh, the fourth part for that when Clarissa tried to steal the amulet and we get a little history on the amulet in a companion piece written by Mark. Fun stuff. Mark, please just give him links. Just just to force him to go to go watch all this stuff. It's great fun. Uh, but that would be the beginning of Mark and I writing together and, and realizing that we wanted to continue to work together as long as the other was interested. When we finished the first one, we'd written this fun little cliffhanger ending, but we didn't know what was gonna happen next. So it was like, okay, when it was time to write the second one, uh, what are we gonna do? Um, this is when Mark had a, a, a great idea that I didn't know if I liked immediately. And that was, he said, what if we change the POV here for part two, we tell it from another character's perspective, but it's not continuing the story. It's starting back where the first episode started, where Thomas started, and showing what was going on with that character uh, throughout that timeline. I was like, okay, well, how would that work? I, in my head, we were just going to keep writing from Thomas's perspective and see what happened next with him. Mark goes and writes a few pages and comes back, and that was when I was like, I... I have to trust this guy. Uh, he, great ideas. And so we we collaborated on that, wrote that one, and, and then continued from there. Um, and it, it's been it's been a blast since. Uh, Mar I don't I don't think Mark no knows uh, my thoughts on any of that, so I'm sharing it with him in this venue. But um, to wrap up, one thing I wanted to share with you was that eventually we would go from podcasting and uh, you know audiobook making uh, to other kinds of creative things when we named Like My Lunatics, uh, like this YouTube channel and all that. But one of the other components that we really enjoy is doing the live storytelling, doing a live show. And uh, the first live show we did together uh, was a rendition of his Eye Biscuit. And I uh, found a little footage of that because uh, Like My Lunatic, Ricky was there and he got some footage. Uh, so I'm going to, ooh, dead. I'm going to show you that footage here in a, in a second. Uh, because I think it was really fun. Uh, but what I love about that footage of us performing, oh, 2019 or so, or I think 2019, about six years after we had started working together, is that there is this woman in the crowd 
who is having an episode. <laughs> she is like, she is really enjoying herself and laughing uncontrollably enough so that some of the people around her are even sort of uncomfortably laughing about the scenario. And I loved it so much because, you know, we didn't get paid for that gig and it was well attended, but it was not a packed crowd, right? Uh, but so why did it feel so great? Because it did. It was because I, I imagined that that woman who was laughing, that you'll hear giggling here in a minute, that that woman went home uh, happier as a result of, of the story and the performance of that story. And um, when I was growing up and a little kid, uh, and I knew that I wanted to make storytelling a part of my life. The reason was because I was affected by the stories I was reading, by the movies I was watching, and I wanted to affect someone else. You sort of like give it back, right? give it back. And so it, that little moment to me is validation that Mark and I working together, and it was his story. It was just his story. I just did a goofy robot voice that you'll hear. But that that our partnership was going to achieve those results. And, and these years later, I still feel the same way. Uh, so I hope you enjoy this stuff on the channel and like my lunatics. I want to show you real quick before we go some footage of us performing in Austin. Um, uh, I biscuit. Uh, so check that out. Mark, if you have it, can you pull that up now? Absolutely, man. Rolling. The system test contained anomalous data in the purpose field. State your purpose for verification. Higgins could hear a soft <laughs> coming from its voice synthesizer. If he didn't know any better, he might have thought the little robot was trying to decide what to say. Finally, the robot simply replied, <laughs> that lady cracks me up. <laughs> so, plenty of stuff on the channel. Please don't forget that besides the Friday night videos, the Monday matchups, the Like My Lunatics Try, and Wednesdays with me here at Drink Place Swear, we also have fiction uh, that we have written together, Mark and I, and we hope to do so in the future. We're working on the Adventures of Hero Man Season 2. By working on, I mean like I've put it on the back burner like three months ago, and Mark, I'm going to get back to it. <laughs> I'm going to start reading the scripts again. Um, thanks for being with us here at Drink, Play, Swear, and at Like My Lunatics. Between now and the next time I talk to you, I'm Todd. See ya.